Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the send-off ceremony for the soldiers of Task Force Avalanche. I would like to welcome the distinguished visitors with us today. Major General Gregory Knight, the Adjutant General of Vermont. Colonel Bray Hopkins, Commander, 86 IDCT Mountain. Command Sergeant Major Paul Edwards, Army Senior Enlisted Advisor. Command Sergeant Major Todd Gagnon, Command Sergeant Major of the 86 IBCT Mountain, and all other distinguished guests and visitors. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the playing of the national anthem and remain standing through the conclusion of the invitation. Present! Present! On! <laughs> Let us bow our heads and pray. Almighty God, creator of all things, we thank you this day for the many blessings you bestow upon us. We thank you for our family and friends who have supported us as soldiers. We thank you for the states that we represent in this National Guard. Above all, we thank you for the United States of America, this country that provides the fundamental right that helps all human beings to thrive, freedom. In this pursuit of freedom, many battles have been fought and great military leaders have bowed their heads and turned to you in their hour of need. George Washington at Valley Forge, General Eisenhower before D-Day, General Patton in Bastogne. All of them entrusted their mission to you, Lord. And so we do the same today. I ask you to bless this heroic and selfless group of men and women before me. Send down your grace upon them and their families. Give them strength to perform their mission and help them persevere through the trying times. Above all, give them the knowledge deep down in their hearts that they stand for something bigger than themselves. They stand for truth and selfless service. They stand for honor, integrity, and faith. And they stand for the notion that when any human being lacks the basic right of freedom, that they will always be American men and women who have the courage to rise and fight on their behalf. Bless these soldiers, Lord. We entrust this mission to you, and may you see us through to the very end. Amen. At this time, I would like to call the Adjutant General of Vermont, Major General Gregory Knight. Good afternoon, Avalanche. Appreciate the opportunity of being here. I'll be very brief. I spoke to many of you this morning. My first message is for your families and for your loved ones. You don't want you worrying about your soldiers while they're deployed. 
We need to focus on their mission. If any of your families need anything, please know all you need to do is reach out. We got your back. For you, soldiers of Avalanche, thank you for your service. Again, spoke to many of you this morning. You're different. You look at all that's going on in our state, in our nation, and all the adversity and challenges that we face. Of all the people that either will not or cannot serve in uniform, you stepped forward and said, pick me. For that, I thank you. I thank you for your service. I thank you for your dedication. Thank you for contributing to the security of our nation. Take care of each other while you're deployed. And come home safe. God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, the Advent General Major General Gregory Knight will now activate Task Force Avalanche and present them with the coveted Green Mountain Battle Flag. Attention to order. The Army National Guard of the United States orders the units of Task Force Avalanche of the 86th Infantry Brigade Combat Team Mountain and its members to active duty on the effective date, 04 February 2021, for a period not to exceed 400 days unless sooner relieved by proper authority. This unit is being mobilized in support of Operation Spartan Shield. Pursuant to Pre Presidential Executive Order 13223, dated 14 September 2001, you are relieved from your present reserve component status and are ordered to Fort Bliss, Texas for mobilization. Signed, Michael Sherfield, Chief Mobilization Branch, First Army. At this time, I would, I would like to call forward the commander of the 86th Infantry Brigade Combat Team Mountain, Colonel Bray Hawkins. Good afternoon. Major General Knight, other senior officers, non-commissioned officers, and uh, those representatives of elected officials. Given the importance of this event, I would be remiss if I also did not recognize many who will eventually watch this virtually, but our most distinguished guests, the soldiers of Task Force Avalanche and their families and significant others. Task Force Avalanche, our federal mission identifies that we're tasked to close with and destroy the enemy anywhere in the world under any climatic condition. You truly bring reality to the any climatic condition portion of that statement today. It's a testament to your fortitude, to the rigor with which you conduct every task, to your professionalism. To do this, you must have discipline, as discipline is the foundation of success. You have trained long and hard to get to this point. You're the tip of the spear of the first of over 2,000 soldiers from our 6th State Brigade heading out the door. You're continuing the long established history of this brigade and the state of Vermont by answering the call. I applaud you for the tenacity and professionalism required to get to this point. Yet, this is just the beginning. Your chain of command has most likely already told you what I, as Alpine 6, 
believe is the most important duty a soldier will ever undertake. It requires consistent, never-ending discipline, and it requires vigilance. The consequence of doing it poorly is great to both you and your brothers and sisters. That duty is full of security. It's a principle of patrolling, whether guarding a post, conducting a security patrol, mounted in the turret of a gun truck, or something as simple as pulling charge of quarters, CQ, or firewalk. I challenge you not to let your guard down, to act with the utmost professionalism in the execution of this duty, because the fact is that many are depending upon you. For the additional members of this team, our families, significant others, employers, or simply just friends, your soldiers raise their right hand to serve and defend this nation. They are the true minority. You should be extremely proud of them. Your support allows them to execute their duty, but that stated, it's often said that the deployments are more difficult for those on the home front than those deployed. I want to give you my personal commitment that the state of Vermont, 3rd Battalion, 172nd Infantry, and the Alpine Brigade will be here for you. Communication is critical. Keep the lines of communication open and ensure you maintain contact with the family support group and monitor social media for insights into what your soldier is doing on a daily basis. I truly thank you for the support that you give us. You make our mission much, much easier. In closing, Task Force Avalanche, I am extremely proud of you. Each of you holds a special place in my heart, and I look forward to seeing you on the high ground downrange, wherever that may be in your area of responsibility. As mountain soldiers, I'm sure you'll find some somewhere. As you depart, I know that you will ascend to victory and that you are ready to go. Best of luck, Avalanche. Alpine sticks out. At this time, Colonel Hawkins and Lieutenant Colonel Wibnall will march together to. At this time, Lieutenant Colonel Wibnall will conduct his speech for Task Force Avalanche. Right. Thank you, Admiral. Gentlemen, please, thank you for being here today and showing your continued support for the Mount Battalion. Uh, as we again mark a notable chapter uh, on our now 40 year history. Uh, soldiers of Task Force Avalanche, I want to commend you on an incredible effort put forward to prepare yourself tactically, physically, mentally for our upcoming deployment. I can only begin to explain what a privilege it is to be a member of this unit, let alone serve as your commander, uh, a responsibility that I take truly to heart. For ne nearly a year now, our nation's morale has been tested. We've taken on a burden of physical and social separation in the interest of our collective health. And for those here today, it pales in comparison to the burden which you and your families are now asked to take on. Our share of you is devastating emotion tied to leaving behind the people that you love most. So in advance, thank you. Thank you for your resilience and know that we'll work together to ease this burden in any way possible. I think it's important for me to define my personal commitments to you. I promise that our mission is valuable. It's critical in preserving our nation's security. Our call to service and acceptance of hardship is a cost worthy of our nation's security and prosperity. 
I commit that my staff is well prepared to support you. The orders and missions you'll receive will always be analyzed, well resourced, and clearly defined. Our team of medics, our PA, our surgeon, they're simply top notch. I promise that we're going to provide every possible advantage to caring for your health and well being. And finally, Command Sergeant Major Campaign and I commit to you that we will share with you every aspect of hardship, from degrade comforts to danger and fear that we may face. From Command Sergeant Major Campaign and I to our most junior soldiers, we're in this together. I share with you a level of concern and anxiety for our current state of our nation, an anxiety that, that I believe to be healthy and natural, for it indicates our collective passion and our love for our America. A passion that those of us here have responded to through a demonstrated commitment to serve. And as if service to your nation was not itself enough, you've placed yourself at the exact point of friction in the United States Army Infantry. In closing, I want to share with you the words of General Douglas MacArthur, which in 2021 are as relevant as they were in 1962 when he said them. Let civilian voices argue the merits or demerits of our process of government. Whether our strength is being sapped by deficit financing, indulged in too long, by federal paternalism grown too mighty, grown too rampant, by morals grown too low, by taxes grown too high, by extremists grown too violent. These great national problems are not for your professional participation or military solution. Our guidepost stands out like tenfold beacon in the night. Duty, honor, country. Send a victory, ready to go. At this time, <clears throat> Colonel Hawkins and Lieutenant Colonel Wibnoff will march together for the pacing of the battalion colors. Ladies and gentlemen, please remain standing for the Army Song.
Today is bittersweet as you, members of Task Force Avalanche, begin a long deployment to serve our country. Since being elected governor, I've tried to attend every National Guard deployment, as I believe it's important to honor and support the men and women choosing to serve and make the sacrifice. If it weren't for COVID-19, I'd be proudly standing with you today to give you the send-off you deserve. Thankfully, Technology allows us to communicate before you leave. So first, I want to thank each and every one of you, as well as your families, for your commitment and sacrifice. I'm sure it's not easy leaving your family and friends, especially in the middle of a pandemic that's completely changed our lives over the past year. But I can assure you, while you do your part to keep us safe, will continue to do ours by supporting and protecting your families while you're away. I want you to know, as we work to vaccinate thousands of Vermonters with the help of your fellow guards, men and women, there is light at the end of the tunnel as we get back to normal. And by the time you return, you'll be able to hug your family and friends and we'll celebrate the service you've given over the past year. I realize this next year will be challenging for each of you as you navigate a new environment, but I'm confident you're prepared for the challenges ahead because of your hard work, preparation, high-paced training, and the long drill weekends getting ready to mobilize. As you carry out your duties in Central Command, just remember how proud we are of you. During times of crisis, including threats of terrorism, natural disasters, or even a global pandemic, the Vermont National Guard has shown time and time again its commitment and dedication to our communities. But it's in these moments of sacrifice that we're reminded of the sense of duty each of you have for this great country and our state. So again, I deeply thank you for your service and willingness to protect our nation. I'm sorry I couldn't be there with you today, but on behalf of all Vermonters, I wish you a successful mission and eagerly await your return. Marcel and I are so proud to bring greetings to the members of the Vermont National Guard. You all know this, but we're so proud you're continuing the long tradition of Vermonters who answer our nation's call to duty. And you're deploying to locations throughout the world. But when you do that, you bring your military training and your expertise. As citizen soldiers, though, you do something else. You bring the life experiences you have as members of your communities. And that's allowed the Vermont National Guard to excel throughout its history. But we also all know that we're embarking on a new chapter in our nation's history. You're the face of the United States of America to the rest of the world. And that's a world that on January 6th watches people assaulted the halls of the Capitol of the United States. A riotous mob going through the Capitol. You're going to have to be the face of reassurance and confidence that we have as a country. And where you are deployed, they'll look to you for that because you're the face and you're the determination that shows the values that we hold so dear, the values that value families and community and sacrifice, and especially the rule of law. And when you deploy, your families and communities deploy with you at least in giving you our backing. So I want to thank you for the sacrifices you're making there, extreme, and I want you to know that this Vermonter, like all other Vermonters, are very, very proud of you. In your deployment, we are going to work closely with your chain of command. And you can reach out to my office to help any way I can. But I just want you to know, and I'll close with this. 
Marcel and I are so proud of all of you. We thank you and your families. And when you or your family see us anywhere in Vermont, feel free to stop and talk if you have any questions. You're great. Thank you. Hello. I want to thank the Vermont National Guard. Three extraordinary things. First, for nearly the past year, they've been delivering food to hungry Vermonters. And I'll tell you, a lot of Vermonters, especially older folks and our kids, needed that food. It was a lifeline. Thank you. Second, you came down here to provide security for the inauguration and a continuation of America's tradition of a peaceful transfer of power. And we needed you. That mob attack on January 6th, we didn't want anything like that to happen again. Thank you. And finally, for those members of our Guard who are going to be deployed overseas, thank you once again. That has to be so hard where you're saying goodbye to your families. Every one of us in Vermont is grateful to you for your willingness to sacrifice on our behalf to keep us and to keep our nations uh, safe. Good luck.